Hello and welcome to Take Me Through Your Day. It's our second episode. We have a private investigator. Now, there's some there's some pretty good information on this one, um, but there's some there's some dark overtones about data security. Um, also, just a warning for anyone that's super offended. Uh, there's some hot Jehovah's Witness talk towards the end, um, but it's all it's all fun. Um, there's a little bit of dryer noise at the end. His roommate's doing laundry or something like that. That's what that beeping is. I didn't really want to cut it out, just you know, just so you know what it is, so it's not bothering anybody. And uh, just a few continuity errors because I'm posting these out of order. Uh, not so much in this episode, but some episodes to come. And like always, you know, get a hold of us on social media at Take Me Tyd, and that's you know the same on iTunes and YouTube and all that stuff. If you want to be interviewed or you know someone that wants to be interviewed, feel free to reach out. That being said, enjoy the show. What do you do? What's that like? Um, I catch people who are lying and I tip off the law, the courts, and others as to them scanning insurance systems. Um, at the same time, if somebody uh, has done well for themselves and the insurance company is trying to <clears throat> just simply take money away from them because of you know the size of that fish i also will collect evidence to get insurance companies off their back so i'm a i'm a presenter of facts no matter who my client is and that's what i have to do in order to maintain uh my reputation my license my professional field i can't uh be selective about what i find uh i get what exists and then like that's presented yeah. Okay, so potentially you could be working for the insurance company or for the individual. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Are you ready to uh, take us through your day? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, what time do you wake up? Uh, well, that depends on what's, uh, what, what, what's on my slate for the day. Typically, it's around 10 or 11 because I'm more of a night owl. So, All right, so that, we'll, just, we'll just pick like a general day and take us through like the average of it. So 10, 11? At, uh, up around 10 30 11 um, I'm at my desk at 11 30 uh, I go through all of the requests that I have so far for that day um, whichever ones are closer to their litigation dates or whichever is more of considered to, to be a rush I knock those out first and then uh, each day is a day of putting out fires or just taking care of you know what needs to be taken care of that's you know, available yeah so what by desk you mean the desk at home not you don't have like an office correct to go i to? don't have an office okay. i am the uh, i am the oracle or the uh i'm the bat girl to all the bat men that are out there all right. so i'm i'm behind the scenes um uh living and existing in big data and helping people that are in the field and telling them you know this person doesn't live here anymore, they actually live here, or this is what this person actually looks like, or here's evidence that this person is not lying about their workers' compensation claim, leave them alone, or, you know, go over here because they tend to go to this gym. Um, I'm, and this is all data from the, the internet. You, this isn't you out in the field spying on people. This is data this is... from the internet. This is data that people provide from themselves because they're not that smart or because they have girlfriends or they have cousins or friends uh it, it, it comes from uh mass data companies um all over the place that are in cyberspace mm. regular web dark web um government uh sources like uh driver's license information civil records criminal records uh probate rec records you name it like and, and what i'm able to do or the, the amount of systems and databases that I'll go through per case depends on, you know, where that person lives. Because every single county and every single state operates differently. Um, and no case is ever the same. Oh, I can imagine. Cause, I, at least keep it interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's it's always more interesting, you know, when you know that something exists. And then, you know, it, it's never like an immediate, you know, in, in a second I know this. But there have been cases where I see that... It, I, I just spoke to a clerk, and I was trying to get to a criminal record on a subject, and I know it exists, but then they tell me it doesn't exist, and then I call back three, four, five days later, get a different clerk, and that's what I have to do in order to get uh, the information that I'm trying to get to. So, so why would the why would the clerk not just tell you? Are they being deliberately deceitful, or are they just dumb? Some, cler some clerks <laughs> are deliberately deceitful, and some clerks are just dumb, uh, but more often than not, it's the... Uh, 
Actually, it's just about 50-50. Um, not to make things too dark, but do you remember the uh, the shooter? There's too many of them nowadays, but th there was a shooter that went into a church in South Carolina. Yes, I remember that. Okay. So, they, with their records, they should have never been able to purchase a gun. Uh, but because of the uh, because of how difficult it was for the FBI to get to their information, it took longer than 72 hours before anyone could find anything. And huh. so because of that, like, they were able to get that weapon and go do what they did. That seems like a pretty flawed system. Oh, that's it's, in, <laughs> it's hella flawed. It's, uh, it's absurd and it's horrible. And uh, a, a big, no, no matter where you fall on the gun issue, whether you're liberal or conservative, um, this nation has a big, big problem with big data, um, with clerks, and with making sure that information that needs to be able to be obtained is easily obtainable. Uh -huh. uh, but you'll never see that in the news because, you know, it's all about the tit -straction. You know, the, the porn stars and the this or that or the whatever else is going on that keeps us away from issues that uh, affect everyone immediately and that are highly important, but they don't get the clickbait that a uh, Stormy Daniel does or that a... Uh, you know, some other topic matter does. Yeah, this is this is the first I'm hearing about such a vulnerability. And, I mean, you'd think that somewhere in the news that would be at least touched on. Like, all right, we touched on it, but nobody's really digging it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, we, we, yeah I'll, I'll try to keep from going too dark. But, um, yeah, in, investigative journalism is pretty dead. Uh, that's what I... I'd say know, so, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, cyber investigations, like, that's what I do, and... I can't tell you the amount of times that if I am silly enough to turn on the news before I'm trying to go to bed, <laughs> yeah. and then I see something, and then I start doing a little bit of work outside of work, and I'm just like, well, this is dark and terrible. <laughs> uh, let me, I, I, let's see, I'll, I'll write a poem and a baseline about it. That'll, yeah, take that establishment <laughs> in your face. All right, so I want to back up a little bit on something you touched on, just for a second. The, uh, the dark web. Mm. Now, this is something that I'm fascinated with, but I know nothing about. What what do you get from the dark web? Like, what what is the the purpose um, that it serves for you to to be in that realm? Um, I know it exists. I have used it before, but I don't know enough about it to confidently tell you what it is or is not. No, um, no, no. I'm not saying that. I, I'm not going to venture in those waters because I'm technologically a moron. But, uh, as like, as, as as you would use it for work, what, what, why would that come in handy for you in the job? Um, it comes in handy for me because of the way that data works and the way that I can use syntax systems to get to the existence of data that's pertinent to the case that I'm working on, if that makes sense. Uh, you, pl you play around with word searches throughout the web, and sometimes that's on just a basic Google search. Sometimes it's through other, uh, you know, like a Tor browser. Okay. And then you know, the different sources give you different information, and then uh, it's up to you to determine whether or not that's even usable. Because let's say, for example, let's say somebody has, they, they hurt their back, or they hurt their back working at... Um, Actually, can we cut that out? Yeah, let's just pick some random other thing. Okay, let's say let's say somebody hurt their back at whatever company. All right. All right. Um, they hurt their back working at some X company, um, but and so they have a weight restriction of fifteen pounds because of the injury that they're claiming that's been going on for years and years and years. But then they, uh, you know, they have their own construction business on the side, uh, or they're posting videos of their squats in the gym, or their posting videos of their bodybuilding uh, competitions, or they're posting videos of themselves participating in pornographic activity. Um, you know, s certain sources, especially if they're from the dark web, you know, I can't use those immediately. Like, the, the, it, it, it can oftentimes involve a, a lot of, many, many various factors that I simply can't use in court. Uh, yeah, so it would give you a general idea of what they're doing, even though it wouldn't be beneficial yeah, the, unless you found it from another source. The dark web is something that if you're using that to gather information, it's not always going to fly in court. Right. Because... I mean, that makes sense. It's, you yeah, know, questionable sources or yeah, what have you. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's get back to back to your day, because that's the, the general idea. Um, so you're, you wake up 10, 30, 11... What's your morning routine? Do you have do you have an alarm? 
I do have an alarm. Um, okay. I have an alarm that I, uh, I press snooze on. I curse it four or five times. Uh, you know, flip to the cool side of the pillow, get about 30 seconds and more sleep in, wake up, uh, and then it's straight to the bowl of Cheerios. Um, you know, very, very important to have the Cheerios. And then within 15, 20 minutes, I'm at my station and I'm immediately looking through what has to be done within the next few hours, what has to be done before the day is up. Okay. That, uh, that's a pretty, pretty solid routine there. Yeah. So I, I do that. And then I also, uh, when I'm being a good lad, I also make, uh, I, I try to make time at least a few times during the week to go run, go lift, go do something. And on, a, then, on a day like that, what, what would you say? What, uh, on a day like that, I'll let's see here, get up at 1030 at my station at 11, work till about three, and then it's off to the gym because three is, to, to, for me, it's the best time. It's not, you know, if, if you go after five, you're going to be waiting 20 minutes to use a piece of equipment because the, the masses are yeah, there. Yeah, so, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I try to avoid them, uh, get some physical activity in, and then come back, uh, you know, come back, shower, um, you know, grab some lunch, lunch, dinner, whatever that is at that time, and then, you know, uh, work for another five, six, seven, eight, nine hours. It just depends on wow. what's on the plate, uh, you know, between the firms that I'm working for between, you know, with my own personal clients and, uh, it's a, it's a big juggling act sometimes. How many clients would you say you handle at a time? Oh God. Uh, just a rough idea. I don't need any specifics. On any given day, um, I, I might see at least four or five different clients. Okay. And these are people you're interacting with live, or this is just your compiling data? Sometimes it's I'm interacting with them live. Uh, sometimes it's an attorney that I'm helping out with a case. Uh, sometimes it is, um, it's, it's come through you know, the, the filtration system that started off with a major insurance company, and then they used somebody else who used somebody else. I'm working in between four or five middlemen. And, uh, you know, doing what I can based off of the, the assignments and you know, the facts that I have in front of me. All right. Fair enough. Um, well, generally speaking, we go into, like, your commute, what time, what type. But since you don't really have oh, one... Oh, the traffic is fantastic. The uh, the traffic <laughs> report is the same. There might be a cat, uh, you know, in the middle of the stairwell. And if it's there, you just kick it. Um, you know, same if there's a deer. You just keep driving because, you know, the deer means nothing. Um, they, they reproduce enough and you know, they just, they can't produce the way a human can. So just knock them down, uh, let them know where their place is in the totem pole <laughs> and just, uh, get to that station. All right. So in, we'll just use your, um, your trip to the gym. What, uh, you, you're driving to the gym, I assume. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you, what do you listen to? What, what's your, what's your main, if I turned your car, car on right now. What would we play? Uh, on the way to the gym or when I'm at the gym. Oh, let's do both. Let's uh, during hockey season, I'll listen to the radio. Um, I like listening to hockey talk because I'm a, I'm a hockey nerd. Uh, when I'm at the gym, if it's a cardio day, then I listen to a lot of embarrassing pop music. Uh, oh, give me some embarrassing pop. Oh, oh Katy Perry is my shit, man. <laughs> Dude, right. we are all fireworks when, when you're trying to run on that treadmill because... Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty embarrassing. Like it, when that pops on, I have to pull the phone up and like bring the volume down because I don't want anyone to like be within earshot and know that I might, you know, run to that happier stuff. Um, happier, popular, more energetic music is for the cardio, and then for the lifting, uh, for the lifting, it's more dark, uh, grungy, heavier, you know, Tool, Chevelle, uh, Ranky, Breaking Benjamin, um, anything that's got some more. Uh, yeah, you know, a little more hatred in there for for the for the appropriate physical activity. Fair enough. So, all right, you said after the gym, you're usually doing like a lunch or dinner, depending on the day, kind of thing. Yeah. You come home and you cook, or you have some yeah, kind of. I cook a lot. I like to cook. Um, I mean, going out is nice, but if you uh, when, when you, anyone that does a budget for, you know, cooking at home as opposed to going out all the time. Um, also, if you're physically active. And you are able to you know, m mentally just remember what it feels like when you're eating the fast food or when you're eating like the quick, easy, you know, sandwiches here and there, as opposed to when you prep 
and you're eating, you know, the, the more whole foods, the vegetables, the brown rice, the lean meats, it's night and day. Um, as far as like how you're able to function, uh, the amount of energy that you have, your mood. <laughs> um, so e even when it's annoying at times because I, you know, I have a rush case or I'm, it's, it's, it's just one of the, if I have a, a whole big flood of work, sometimes, you know, forget about it. I'm just going to grab something quick and easy, but I do what I can to try to eat more healthy, um, because of the, the boost that it gives to me mentally and physically, um, that, that's the biggest reason. Plus, just going out is expensive. Yeah, so what's what's like a quick meal that you'd... Just like a go-to meal. A uh, go-to meal would be... Um, if I just lifted, then brown rice or sweet potato with chicken breast and salad. Or uh, replace the salad with broccoli and hummus or carrots and hummus. Alright, well, how are you doing the chicken? Uh, I bake it. Bake it at 350 for one hour. Oh, very informative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You just uh, pick your, pick whatever sauce you want, or start making your own sauce. It's uh, it's good. It's a it's a fun, better way to you know, for your own health as well as for your social life. Yeah, cooking's fun. <laughs> so back back to your uh, your gig. Do you have people you work with on a regular basis, or is it just you and clients, and that's kind of just a roll of the dice? Um, let's see here. There are some people that I work with on a regular basis when it comes to myself and my own personal company. Uh, when it comes to the larger firms that I'm employed by, um, there's much less uh, th th there's much less communication with any other humans um, because the bigger firms they're all about um, they're, they're all about uh, as much production in as little of time as possible, which uh, which explains some of the cases they're able to crack versus the ones that they can't. Uh, so, uh, unfor uh, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, the bigger firms, they have more money to spend in marketing. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, they're going to get, they have a much higher, you know, pool to work from. Uh, but when I work for myself, uh, or when I'm working for a case that absolutely must have everything that exists on a case because of how important it is to the client's, um, that's you know it's a lot more detail oriented and there's a lot more communication involved with them to make sure that I'm uh, doing all that I can to get them exactly what they need uh, to win. Okay, so um, just in general, do you have any like pet peeves about the job? Anything that really gets you? Anything that people do that really get you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The the whole Walmarting or the whole uh, capitalism in this field is. Uh, a gigantic road cone dildo that is being shoved up the backsides <laughs> of all of society every single day. Um, because, again, this isn't in the news, but uh, and, and, and insurance companies are no angels themselves. Yeah. But the ways that they operate and the ways in which they have to uh, you know, do what they have to do to obtain money to make quotas to, to operate their company, that's severely hindered sometimes by the amount of garbage uh, instances of insurance fraud that are just draining them, out, uh, that are draining large, large sums of money away from them. <laughs> um, so I hate, I hate working for, I don't, uh, I should edit that too, but screw it. This is, is it anonymous, right? Yeah, it's yeah, anonymous. anonymous. And I mean, so, you don't have to name any yeah, names. So, I just mean like just... So, so the bigger firms, um, you know, if you have somebody named Leviticus Deuteronomy, and they live in like some shanty town out in the middle of nowhere, and there's one of them. <laughs> the amount of work necessary to make sure that you obtain everything on them is drastically easier and more simple than if you have a John Smith that lives in New York City or uh -huh. a Pedro Gomez in Los Angeles. So the firms, they don't care if it's you know that individual, if that's very, if, if it's a very unique name with, with a very unique case with a very unique set of circumstances. You know, those are, are much, much easier. And, you know, if that takes like an hour or an hour and a half, they want that same kind of speed and production when it's John Smith in uh, New York City or when it's Pedro Gomez in Los Angeles or Miami. So, you know, I might do the paperwork necessary to get a case going and be looking at data that I know if I'm going to do all that I can to make sure that this is done appropriately and correctly, this needs minimum three... To six hours, sometimes nine, ten hours. 
sometimes it's very, very involved. Um, the bigger firms don't care. That's not what they're selling. They're not selling quality. They are selling as much work for as cheap as they possibly can. They just can. want turnover, turnover, exactly. turnover. Exactly. Turnover, 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 turnover. John Smith in New York, okay, you've looked for a half hour, let's sell that. You know, Pedro, wow. all right, we've had 20 minutes, we got to sell that. we got to move, 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 move. That's, that's surprising. I mean, it's not surprising that it works that way, but it's surprising that anyone would want it to work that way. <sighs> well, that's unfortunate. Um, I mean, being in the trenches as I am, I feel like many insurance companies just simply don't understand what they're paying for. Uh, if they did, then <laughs> they wouldn't pay for it anymore. Well, I mean, is that the issue? They're just too far removed to really understand what it is that you do? Well, the, the issue with this capitalist society we have is that, you know, you maximize your profits by outsourcing as much work as possible. So you're doing everything as cheaply as you can, as quick as quickly as you can, which works on paper until the entire system collapses, mm. which, uh, you know, a great future we have coming to us. <laughs> Should be fun. Get your tuna, kids. <laughs> So what, uh, did you have any specific schooling to get into this field? Uh, well, when I first went to college, uh, I was studying history, then that became history. <laughs> uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do, to be perfectly honest. I had no clue that, you know, that, that there was not a private investigator four-year curriculum in any college that I looked at. Yeah. So I was, at first I was history. I knew that that was a bad, that was a bad deal. I started looking more into the cost of college as well as like student debt when you get out of college and how you know bankruptcy will never free you from those chains. <laughs> Listen, uh, bankruptcy will never free you from student debt. Anyone listening to this, no bankruptcy for you. Um, so, I uh, I decided to give finance a try because I thought you know, everyone needs to make smart financial decisions. I started working at a bank okay. um, because I had done. Uh, I'd done my time at community college, and then it was time to move on to the state schools that wanted to charge five, six, seven, ten, twelve times more the amount of money to take those, you know, take any class that's there. Yeah. So I started working at a bank that agreed to, you know, if you work here for I think it was six months or a year, we'll pay for your higher learning. So okay. I, and is this just like a teller gig? Or yeah, it was just a teller gig. Oh, okay. So I started doing that, and uh, that was quite an education in and of itself. Uh, but long story short, uh, I realized that, that wasn't for me either. Yeah. Um, did not want to do it. Uh, in fact, I hated it. Um, because when you are a teller, uh, you are perfectly trained to be one of the board. You're perfectly trained to have no personal opinions, especially when you're correct. And yeah. you are trained to never stand up for yourself when you absolutely must. Because it is quite a trip when somebody pulls up to a bank in a brand new Beamer, brand new Jag, they get out, they look like money, they smell like money, they are on cloud nine. They, they are the nature boy of whatever it is that they are doing. Yeah. But then they have some issue where they can't withdraw their normal amount of money and it's your fault. But then you start looking into their financial files and it's, oh man, you look really good being really broke. You have nothing. <laughs> you have student loan debts from 1970, whatever you haven't paid off. You have three maxed out credit cards that are in the six figures, and you are screwed. Wow. And, and you can't say any of that when you're a teller because customer is always right, and you need them to, uh, you know, continue being stupid. Yeah. So, anywho, I uh, worked at the bank for a couple of years, decided I didn't want to do that, and as... Fate would have it. That's not a good word. As as uh, as chance would have it, um, I wound up. Uh, I had to move uh, states away to take care of some family matters, and I was looking for any job anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I entered an ad on Craigslist that was for uh, you know just an admin gig, and I went to this company, which will remain nameless. And I was a coffee guy. I was a fax this guy. I was a uh, run this errand, do this, do that. Like, whatever you say, I will do it in an iron shirt and with a tied tie. Yeah. And uh, sometimes khaki pants, but I prefer black. So, did my thing. And one day, uh, someone there asked me, how good are you at hunting information? 
and I wasn't doing anything, so I just said... This is someone, like, in your office? This is somebody in the company. You know, they, they needed assistance because they were being overrun with work. Okay. So, they asked me uh, if I would be willing to try out something new that wasn't faxing or, you know, running errands for people. Yeah, I told something them, that isn't grunt work. Yeah, I told them, sure, and I tried it out, and I had immediate impact. Um, uh, in, in case one, case two, they decided to give me a, a quote-unquote interview case with some with some work that had been previously done. And uh, it was supposed to just be practice. But in that first hour, I found new information that had to be reported to the client, and then like lawyers had to be hired to bring a case to litigation because the previous quote-unquote investigator uh, failed to capture what they needed to capture. So this is like something you took to. This wasn't just luck? I took to it, and it was luck. A little bit of both. <laughs> it was a little right. bit of both. Like, I, I had no clue that this existed. Um, and, like, falling into this, it, it, it was more like the, the path chose me as opposed to me choosing it. You know, yeah. I, I had no clue what I was, It was an admin gig. You know, I, I had no clue that this would pop up as a chance. And this it seems did. to be the running theme of, of all of my interviews so far. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's always chance. It's just, you know, you can't plan for these kind of things. Yeah, I, I feel like... If you don't, if you don't know and pick your path in life, you know at some point in time that eventually the path picks you. Uh, however, I'm very, very fortunate because, you know, I fell into something that I have a knack for, yeah. and, that, and that I'm good at, and that you know, I'm, I'm passionate about. Um, not everyone is as is as lucky as I am. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm here interviewing you. Yeah, it's a fascinating story, and and it's one of those things where it's like I've known you for a while. And uh, I probably could have gone my whole life without knowing these little facts about you. Because how often do you really get into the nitty gritty of like how you got what you got? Uh, ex uh, I'm not sure I understand. I mean, how do I get into the nitty gritty of like a, a case that I'm working on, or how did I? No, I just mean in general, like me knowing you. What are the chances that you I'd know this much about you just hanging out, <laughs> oh, you rather would... than us sitting here and doing this you, interview? You wouldn't because I'm a good partier. I'm a responsible <laughs> partier. I'm not going to show up to any fun gathering and just start going, Hi, what do you do? Here's a card. Hi, what do you do? Here's exactly. a card. Hi, do you not trust your friends? Cool. <laughs> Here's a card. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. And uh, it just reinforces why, why I do this. Um... Let's see here. We got some uh, got some advice for someone who wants to get into this. Someone young who just wants to just go drive this path home. My advice to anyone younger that's listening to this is try to think of one class that you ever had in elementary school, high school, college, middle school, summer school, boarding school, uh, via YouTube video, anything. When's the last time that you were ever taught or instructed or encouraged to seek out where your talents lie? Like, when's the last time that you were taught, here's how you figure out, like, what completes you, or what is best for you? There's none of that. There's zero. Uh, so my advice would be, you know, sometimes you, you gotta play the games, you gotta show up to class on time, you gotta, you know, you gotta behave. But it's incredibly vital and important to remember who you are. And sometimes that's difficult, and that requires good friends, it requires good family, it requires... A good piece of music, a good movie. It requires something, anything that makes you feel alive. That makes you feel that you can contribute to something. Uh, because if you're just going for the paychecks, if you're just going for uh, the having something honorable to say when you're at networking events or you know yeah. out at a restaurant, you know living the single life or whatever, like, it's, it's, it will eventually come crashing down upon you. <laughs> and, uh, you'll, you'll never stand out as much as you would as if you were, uh, compared to, you know, if you were being more conscious about what is best for you and your life path. So as far as getting into what I'm getting into, I feel like that advice, it stays the same for me. Uh, but, it, uh, for, for anyone that wants to be a PI, but if you want to be a PI, um, the best thing that took way too long to, to get around to. The <laughs> no, it's good that you actually answered another question down the line. And All right, we'll just roll them in the together. Be, the best way to become a PI: find a PI, find uh, PI firms, call them, and work for them. 
take any job that you can. You want to help, you want to learn, you want to be a part of the process. So is it as easy as like a cold calling kind of thing, or do you have to have some kind of background in, in some it's, kind of it's, education? It's a cold calling. There is nothing that will help you with this more than experience. And when Just I, showing up. And... I, you show up, be willing to work. Have a reason why you want to go after people that are scum <laughs> that deserve <laughs> to be gone after. My reason is, uh, and this helps me to this day. Like you know, years ago I was involved in a bad car accident, and you know I couldn't work for months. You know I was fed and taken care of by people that had extra dollars to give to me, and I will always be you know in debt to them for that. Yeah. Um, but. That said, you know, I remember what it's like to be injured, to be crippled, to, 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 not, to have my life go on hold, to have the debts go up, and to be doing what I can to get by. And so when I see other people <laughs> that either are in the same situation and they need help, I, you know, I, I didn't know about uh, you know, insurance companies, and I did not know that there was a, a system in place to help people out going through this. Uh, so when I see other people that are genuine and that need that help, I'm more than happy to do everything that I can within my power to, to, to get information out there to lawyers, to insurance companies, to everyone involved to let them know this is legit. This is real. On the flip side, if someone is lying about a sprained ankle from four years ago <laughs> and they have their side company and they have their porno videos and they have their weightlifting competitions i will destroy them <laughs> with everything uh that i possibly can and uh, it's it, it's that energy it's that vibe it's that mindset that makes me better than most people at my job um, i like that it's very noble but I do have to touch on this like the second time you brought up porn. There's got to be, you got to give me some kind of story. You don't have to give any names or anything, but you found something. This was a real case. Uh, and it's, it's still to this day one of my favorite ones to tell. Let's hear it. Uh, somebody had a weightlifting restriction of 15 or 20 pounds. Uh, you know, they couldn't lift any more boxes. Okay. Yeah, it was very, very sad. Oh, yeah. and, and, they, and they were riding that pony for years, just collecting paycheck after paycheck after paycheck. Wow. Well... Uh, I did my thing, um, and long story short, I was able to uh, give vi uh, porn videos to an attorney that was representing the, excuse me, the insurance company that this person was ripping off. Oh, so this is like video you get to pass around, like, oh, oh they, look, what, look they, what they, such and such is up they, to. They lifted up their sexual partner up against a wall and proceeded to <laughs> service the account. <laughs> And that wound up being a part of the litigation. Clearly, Your Honor, you can see even just the left teat of this <laughs> Babylonian walker of the night. That is that far more so than funny. 20 pounds. <laughs> just, just the idea of a bunch of stuffy lawyers in a room just like talking about breakdown. Oh, yeah, trying to hide the boners while at the same time trying to figure out a way to you know represent their clients and settle things appropriately. It was... Uh, it was fantastic. It was. I'm. I'm proud of that. That, that person deserved to be taken down. Uh, to ride the. You know, even even if they had been genuinely hurt for a few months, to say that, to, to ride that for years, and then to have video evidence of them lying and knowing that actions of scam artists like that keep other people that genuinely need help. It keeps them, you know, financially in the dirt and just at times ruined i have i have zero qualms about you know bringing that to light and uh creating interesting days in court for all parties involved yeah that's that's fantastic what uh, how does one acquire like did you just stumble upon that or like are they posting that kind of stuff to like their twitter or something um well it, it depends on the case uh sometimes you know you, you hunt through various data systems uh, both government-based and not government-based, and it's all about hunches. It'd be like an iCloud situation. Uh, I'm really fixated on the porn thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about these titties that lets me know that injustice injustice is being done. Um, no, it, it, it's a matter of hunches. Uh, like, yeah, you know, I, I, I that's how I discovered like from day one of this job. Like, I had a natural inclination for it. Like, sometimes you just have a light that goes off, and you you want to look into something a little bit further. 
just a little more, just one more associate, one more link from this person to this person, and you never know when that might lead to an associate or a family member, you know, of the of the lying scammer <laughs> that uh, you know has the social disease of thinking that it is acceptable or of a uh, good and positive quality to post their entire life online all the time. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, it opens up mountains and mountains of more data for anyone to go through that knows what they're doing. And you just do this as an investigator. You, you don't have any special credentials that lets you surf through the internet? And... Um, I, am, I am a licensed investigator, so I have access to... Uh, because, because I went through... Because I did my work as an apprentice... Hmm. for four years um, and I never presented anything in court that was uh, criminal or I, I, I myself you know I was I was good I never in a professional trap yeah, I, I, I never entrapped anybody um, I never uh, presented information that was regarding the incorrect person like e even as much as it you may get a rush from uh, you know, bring to light something that's shading that needs to be brought to the light. If you're not 100% sure, you got to let that go. Um, okay. That's just the way it is. So it was four years of uh, working as an apprentice to other investigators, uh, them vouching for me to uh, the necessary government channels yeah. to let them know, you know, I was responsible for this, 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 these cases here, 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 here. Um, you know, I'd never entrapped anyone never lied about uh, how I got to something. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's it's a long grind, um, but uh, doing that for as long as I did got me access that I have now that allows me to uh, work for clients you know, that, that, that need help that's more detailed and more thorough than what bigger PI firms are able to offer. Okay. Um... Do you have any other just juicy stories before we get into the rest of this? Just like there's something something that sticks out to you that's like, oh, this will this will be good at a cocktail party. No, oh, there's an NFL player one time that was receiving workers' comp while they were playing for the league. Wow, that's <laughs> that's egregious. Man, wow. I've been full of shit before, but good grief, man. <laughs> you're, you're going down. Uh, juicy stories, juicy stories. Um not even juicy, just you know, something that you find interesting. I find it interesting when I'm working on some sort of a false injury claim, or even a real injury claim, and because I'm doing all of the data work and the cyber work that I am, sometimes, more often than not, I find links to an involving infidelity uh, that, you know, they're not a part of the case, but, you know... So that's just something you keep to yourself? Like I keep that to myself. It, you know, if, if, if somebody's married, you know, husband, wife, whoever, and they're being unfaithful, the insurance company can't use that against them. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, more often than not, I see a whole lot of uh, cyber trifling, as we'll, <laughs> cyber as we'll trifling. call it. All right. Like, you know, uh, here's a good example. I mean, y you name it, I've seen it, man. Uh, somebody who is married but has uh, a child over in another city that their current spouse doesn't know about. Ooh. Or somebody that's married and is on multiple online dating <laughs> sites or they're an escort or there's videos of them you know via Instagram that are up on some yeah, from stri some strip club where they didn't exactly have a you no know, touching policy uh -huh. uh, you name it so it's a lot of um, there's there's plenty of juice but okay well let's put it this way what's something that you could tell people that you think would either shock them or surprise them what what's something unexpected that you know that you can impart to the world? I believe we touched on it a little bit. Uh, we need this country in particular needs a lot of help with its data systems. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we got into that. A yeah, little bit. there's there, there's a lot of people that um, it it is shocking sometimes when you see the errors that have been made by clerks before, um, and you're able to discover that somebody, whether because they're trying to gain employment or because it, it's it, it's an insurance claim or because it's whatever, uh, they have criminal records on their record involving. Uh, attempted murder or murder or rape and they never did those things <laughs> but it exists and it's there uh, because the clerk was they didn't have enough coffee <laughs> or yeah. their prescriptions ran out and uh, for whatever reason uh, there's many people out there that have stuff on 
that show up on their records and they might not get a job and uh, they won't ask why. Like, like they, they don't go through... Uh, they, they, they don't do what's necessary to discover this and figure out what they have to do based off of their state, city, and county to, to correct this material. Yeah, that's I, that actually happened to me. I, uh, oh, really? I got denied a job at Amazon when they started delivering around here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I got a copy of, like, why I was denied, like, what the, what the report said. And apparently I was in Texas in jail for 15 years <laughs> when I was uh, 12 years old and apparently not even born yet. Yeah. And they denied me the job, on mm. that, even though I had never been to Texas. Yeah. The, the amount of access to inappropriate... Uh, the amount of inappropriate access to data systems is also shocking. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you ever heard... And I can say this, because this is public knowledge. Have you ever heard of Radaris? Mm -mm. Um, anyone listening that's curious, uh, Google Radaris lawsuit, and then just read through what they were sued for. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. It, it's very shocking what data some companies, some PI firms, some people <laughs> will do to make a fast buck. Um, and they don't, you know, they don't verify this information. They don't put any work into anything that, you know, it's... Well, when you're all about automation and making as many quick dollars as you possibly can, uh, you know, you might wind up doing you know, what you just talked about with regard to Amazon. You might be destroying someone's livelihood. and uh, Just you know, because you forgot a cup of coffee. That because morning. you forgot a cup of coffee. Yeah, like they, they didn't have the right creamer or they ran out of stevia, so like you had to use sugar, but you're trying to avoid sugar so you didn't have the appropriate caffeine. It's, uh, it's bad. It's, it's um, very bad. And... I did not realize it was that simple to make such a huge mistake. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Like, uh, there's, there's too many, you know, other investigators or, or too many other clerks that at some point in time, like I said, it could be a, a John Smith. It could be a very, very common name. But it's not that difficult of a fix when, you, when you're creating these records wherever you live, wherever you're operating. Uh, does the date of birth match? <laughs> does the ethnicity match? Um, yeah, I think in my situation, it was none of those things. It's like, I have a generic enough name where it's like, oh yeah, there's a million of those guys. Yeah, no offense to you, <laughs> but because you're not currently anyway, because because you don't have the free time and, you know, the the, the free money to attack, the, to, to, to attack whoever is responsible for that, they go free. Because uh, that's the way most people operate. Um, you know, if I found out something was in my file that shouldn't have been there, do I have the months, the years... Uh, whatever to ensure that whoever was responsible for this was punished no I well yeah I, I doubt i could do that i went i went to the company that provided amazon the information and got everything corrected through them but i never went back to amazon i was like hey look i'm not that guy i'm innocent i'm innocent <laughs> can i do this no <laughs> no turns out the job sucks anyway i had a friend of mine do it it's like oh it's yeah. terrible but uh neither here nor there Mm -hmm. But let's wrap your day up, and then we'll get into some of the fun stuff, some of the more lightheartedness. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the end of your day, what do you do to gener generally just wrap up? And I mean the job. I don't mean, like... Uh, to wrap up the job... Um, is it <laughs> easy as slamming a laptop down, or you got to, like, really settle in? Uh, sometimes it is as easy as slamming a laptop down. Uh, sometimes it's making sure... Were all these? Do I have any deadlines that were over today, or that are over within the next twenty four hours? Because with this job, you know, sometimes it is very, very interesting, and you know, getting up for the work is no big deal. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's those porn videos. Sometimes, and a lot of times, it's a whole lot of data analysis hmm. and for six, seven, eight, nine, eleven hours at a time. <laughs> and there are some days. Where you get to a point, and like you recognize it, where you just know it's it's time to stop. You know, maybe I worked 13 <laughs> hours a day. Some days I only worked six or seven. Uh, but if I am at a point for whatever reason <laughs> that I am mentally too tired to, to to be at the level that I need to be at to do what I do, uh, then it's time to shut the laptop down. Um, so you know, sometimes the cases are more intriguing, and I. You know, th th sometimes the day doesn't shut down until 4 or 5 in the morning. Oh, wow. Uh, sometimes I have been racking my brain around something, uh, and I didn't take a, a break to go to the gym or to do anything. <laughs> and, you know, whatever, 9, 10, 11 p.m. rolls around, and, you know, the, you know, the voice goes off of, I can't do this anymore today. And, you know, clock out and done. Done. All right. So, 
You're done with work for the day. Do you have like a leisure activity that you're into? Anything to just unwind? Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's a number of YouTube videos that I enjoy uh, looking through. I like watching comedy. I like attempting to write comedy here and there. I like playing music. I like uh, I like playing hockey competitively. Although that's uh, <laughs> if if the day has ended earlier, only then during the week will I be able to play hockey competitively on a gaming system. Uh, oh, I'm, so this is not, it's not like in real life, you're not going no, to no, play no, hockey. No, no, <laughs> no, if I'm playing hockey virtually, uh, that's usually, that, that goes hand in hand with getting angry and not being able to go to sleep. Because <laughs> um, every time I lose, obviously it's not my fault. <laughs> um, so uh, sometimes I do that, sometimes you know, I'll read, sometimes I write, sometimes I uh, play a guitar, sometimes I just... Uh, phone a friend text a friend who I haven't seen for a while see how they're doing fair enough so what time um, time you just on an average day are you going to bed like do you have like a, a time you like to shoot for I don't have a time that I shoot for <laughs> I, I honestly can't say that there is one uh, I try to shoot for that 11 wake up time but um, you know especially if it's a if I have a bunch of deadlines and they're all very interesting cases I might there are plenty of days where I, I'm, I'm going till 4 a.m., I'm going till 5 a.m. Uh, there are other days where the deadlines aren't there, but I still have a mountain of work to do. But I, after a set amount of time, I can't stand to be looking at my screen <laughs> anymore. I'm done. Yeah. I'm, I'm just done. Oh, I get it. Do you have any, um, just, you don't have to think too hard about it, but like any goals or aspirations for the future? Uh, to eventually be completely independent. Um, so just to have your own PI firm? Yeah, have my own PI firm, except to work for myself. I mean, maybe I'll hire a couple of people, but um, you know, I, I don't have the goal of getting my own clients and then outsourcing to work to other people that don't know what they're doing. Yeah, so you have a, an idea of how you'd want yeah, to run. Yeah, so I, I would like to you know, get to where I want to be financially. Uh, ideally, I'd like to work 20 to 30 hours max per week, and then I want to take the rest of that time and write poop jokes <laughs> <laughs> or uh, learn how to cook things I don't know how to cook or to go out of town uh, to a place I've never been to and explore someplace new. Um, like m my goal is to free myself, uh, t to have my own professional sandbox mm. that other people can trust that has a very good reputation but at the same time affords, uh, affords me uh, the time, the energy, and the finances to do what I want to do. Um, good. I mean, I, I think that's that's a pretty good answer. Yeah, you, you that, that's, that's, what everyone that. should, that's what everyone should shoot for. Um, I, I think earlier you asked, like, if I had any advice for kids that were thinking of going into this. Yeah. Uh, and I said, <laughs> go, fine, what, bring, what, what makes you alive? Um, you know, you, you have to... That there has to be a balance between what makes what makes you feel alive and what is also financially viable for you. Yeah. So ideally, if I was living in, I don't know, maybe the 60s or 70s, maybe I would just be going from bar to bar at night telling jokes. <laughs> um, and it'd be, because it's because of the hippies, I would have places to stay and I'd be fine. But in today's uh, you know time and age, financially and, and otherwise, it's simply not it's not doable. Um, so. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's all in how you want to you want to handle that thing. I, I've I've met comedians that can handle it. And uh, I don't think that's a life I'd want to live. But I, I can see. I think see they're called people. better comedians. I think that's another big <laughs> better part of it too. Yeah. yeah. Also, also <laughs> better comedians do that. Yeah. They stay in hotels. I, that they I, pay I for. have what's called excuses as to why I'm not a, uh, you know, on stage as often as I would like as I would like to be, um, but. Uh, to the comedians that are out there doing putting in the grunt work, kudos, and I hope they all goddamn make it. Cause uh, a lot of bad comics out there that just. <laughs> They, 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 they should have stuck to their day jobs. <laughs> well, going back to, to what you said about um, finding what you want and, and finding what makes you alive, I, I think a large part of me interviewing people is trying to find that. Because there's a lot of people out there that nobody talks about that, like, like myself, I don't know what I want. And that has... That's led, a problem. <laughs> it's, it's led me to have an enormous resume of a lot of very interesting things, but still kind of living in this cloud of like you know you gave me 10 million dollars right now I couldn't really tell you what I do mm -hmm. and um you know it's it's nice to 
talk to someone who has some kind of idea for their ideal life. Yeah, or or, or at least um, I don't even know if I would consider myself that. Um, I'm I'm somebody that if I'm wrong, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody presents information or facts or anything that like I've not considered before, like I'm I'm up for considering it. I might reject it after five seconds, but I'm up for considering it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because if you don't. I think that most pe I would I would venture to say ninety something percent of people, especially in American society, fall into the same boat as you. Um, and, and not to get too deeply philosophical here, but no, when, go when, on. when you think back to when you were a kid, before language, you know, all, all you have is your gut, all you have is your feeling, and from a very early age, you're told immediately, shut the fuck up, <laughs> like stop crying, stop whining about this. Don't go... Silence this. Silence who you are. And adopt these ideas of other people who are not you. And so it's very, very difficult. And, and it's a very long process to be able to discover, like, that own voice of your own. Call it your gut. Call it your... Call it your whatever it is. Because um, there's, there's too many religions that like to uh, hijack that and then try to get you to join up and give them donations of course um actually that's a that's a good topic you brought up i hadn't even thought of that do you want to speak about your religious background at all because i don't i don't know a whole lot about it uh if you just want to dip, <laughs> just dip your toe in for the sake of the no, podcast I, if not we can just totally no, skip we, over it I, I can dip a toe or i can do a cannonball i just want to make <laughs> sure that it's like at least somewhat positive i think people are genuinely curious and that's just my opinion but you know you can always fast forward if you don't like it uh Let's see here. I mean, do you have a coin to flip? <laughs> I do, but do you want to flip a coin about this? No, I was raised a Jehovah's Witness, so like that considered, like it was a whole bunch of going from door to door, telling people that what they were doing was wrong, explaining why what they were doing was wrong, telling them the world was going to end. It was a lot of selling. It was a lot of selling fear. Well, hang, and, hang on, let me stop you right there, just because I want to get more into detail because I genuinely don't know anything about this. Um, well, you, you can't be peddling fear right away, right? You have to get in the door, right? Well, sure, but it depends on, you know, the current events. It depends on the watchtower that you're presenting. It depends on... So there's a pitch for every... Oh, sure, and it, and it changes all the time based off of the governing body of that organized religion. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's it, for the people that are a part of it, it's a way for them to feel like they have direction in a directionless world. It's a way for them to feel like, oh, I have found myself, or I do know X, Y, or Z, I am sure about A, B, and C, when it's more or less a more conservative version of Alex Jones. Like, the, <laughs> the, the selling and the preaching of the end of the world has been going on for decades, and it might damn well come. But in the meantime, it's a lot better for everybody if we all do what we can to try to remain positive and not buy into every source of fear that there is. You know, sometimes you do need to raise a stink. Sometimes you do need to do what you can to, to make situations right. Uh, okay, yeah. But it's also incredibly important to not reject into... Uh, sorry, to, to not um, retreat into mental echo chambers. It's important to not only surround yourself with uh, sources of I'm right com and figuring out like how what you already believe is the way that it is, and nothing could be fallible about the things that you believe and the things that you're practicing in your own life. Okay. And I, I feel like that's a that's a big that, that's a big part of you know finding yourself and figuring out like what maybe you should or ought to do. Well, I think there's a lot of places in life that, that want to do that for you. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's just like here, I have all the answers. Just stop thinking. Come here. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, you want to go into a business? You want to wear a suit and, and and be a suitable mate for somebody? Come here. Come here. Yeah. Get to, uh, pay the debts later. In the meantime, <laughs> let's party. Let's figure <laughs> out how you can, you know, have that iron shirt, wear a tie, and be acceptable to uh, the partners you're trying to. Uh, you know, spread your seed with. Or here's a way for you to make your parents proud. There's infinite avenues, religiously, financially, um, existentially, you name it. There's, there's endless ways where people sell fear and sell what other people ought to be doing with their lives. Um, and it's a shame. 
And the biggest thing that will ever protect you from that is having an experience like I had, being a witness. Like, uh, being able to have the experience of saying, hold it. Whoops. That, 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 that is the biggest tool that you can ever have is the ability to say, whoops, my bad, uh, this was wrong, I'm going to stop this now. Because you never know when everything that you've been taught uh, could just be a gigantic uh, load of crap. Excuse me, what's it? We still going? Yeah, we're still right, going. Cool, cool, cool. What, um... So was there some kind of, uh, I hate to say a come to Jesus moment, but was there some, <laughs> was there some thing that happened to you that made you just, just have that realization of like, oh, well, this isn't for me? Um, I knew it was all a bunch of crap when I was growing up and I couldn't have the friends that I wanted. I couldn't, uh... Oh, so you, like, they would actively say like, oh, you can't hang out with that yeah, person. Yeah, like, they're, it, not, if, they're if not, some, not like us. If somebody wasn't, you know, a part of the, the church and, and providing donations and, doing what the elder said was the right way to be they were considered bad associations and you had to stay away from them uh so how strict were they about that was incredibly incredible incredibly okay. and anyone that exists within that sect and yet maintains relations with people outside of it they're lying to themselves uh you're lying to yourselves stop it <laughs> it's it's a it's a very unhealthy version of keeping a toe on base sort of thing yeah you know like w with people that go to church on just easter sunday or just christmas just to appease their parents sort yeah. of thing so it's 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 far more involved there um it's something that well, i don't want to venture too far away from your initial question i know and I, I knew it was incorrect for me because i couldn't be who i wanted to be i couldn't pursue what i wanted to pursue and i was ordered to hate people that i didn't hate and so when well, so so is a gradual thing or is it just like a hit you thing? Um, it sounds kind of gradual the way it you're was. It, it was gradual in a violent, constantly like hitting again and again <laughs> and again and again over the years, yeah. uh, until it made me a, a useful monster. Um, so yeah, I think the first the, the first time I ever knew this was not going to work uh, it was when a friend of mine got excommunicated. Uh, when someone gets excommunicated or disfellowship there, like, you can't talk to them, you can't call them, you can't, like, you have to, like, completely oust them from your life. And so it seems stupid and, and fairy taleish and childish, but when you have this, you know, this, this community where everyone can only hang out with each other and everyone on the outside is evil, um, you know, that's how you control people. When, when all of a sudden you, you messed up for whatever reason. Uh, you, 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 you fornicated outside of the bonds of the marriage. Praise the Lord. Whatever. <laughs> like, you, you did something bad. You, you watched the wrong movie. The you, wrong movie? What was the... Uh... Uh, you couldn't watch R-rated movies. You, uh, you know, depending... So it was just a blanket. Like, if it's R, totally out of the question. Yeah, well, it also depended on the elders that <laughs> were a part of your church. You know, some people were more strict than others. But overall, there was definitely... Uh, depending on, on the literature that was going on at the time and the, the doctrine at the time, uh, there were always avenues for certain people, for certain elders who were nothing more than, than carpenters and plumbers outside of their job to act as like controlling you know, power-worthy figures yeah. in this you know, messed up little group where they could feel that they were far more important than they actually were. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, f first time... Uh, First time it ever like hit me in, in the cockles of the soul, knowing that this was not going to work out. Um, I think I was 11 or so. A friend of mine got excommunicated. I was told to hate him, and I just didn't. I didn't want yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, you can't <laughs> just make someone hate someone. Yeah, and, and another big thing that is a big problem for organized religion is if any time you ever read the doctrines or read <laughs> your holy books with a critical eye, or if you ever read it with a with with a with an added perspective of, of thinking of like where it comes from historically, mm -hmm. you're doomed. There's no way that you will ever <laughs> keep to it. Just uh, another small example, you know, when you, when you look into ancient Phoenician, ancient Greek, ancient Hebrew, you know, we, it's a lost language. So we only know 25% of it. So you're telling me you have this big book with 66 books in it known as the Bible, and you were only able to translate 25% of the language, and yet you know everything that this means you know what god is trying to tell me to do and as 
all high and powerful and infinitely wise as God is, they need more money. Huh. <laughs> That's interesting. That's really, really interesting. Sounds like a scam to me. So, yeah. Right, this is the, the last question about religion is because I don't want to make this a religious show. Um, the uh, the door-to-door -door stuff. What, when does that start? Like, what age are you like, okay, let's, let's coach you up. Let's get you out there. Four or five years old. Just, are you just going with your parents? Or? Yeah, you, you start walking with your parents hand in hand. Uh, if you don't learn presentations or start regurgitating the information that they tell you, then your Nintendo gets taken away. Big problem. Very, oh, very big okay. problem. There it goes. <laughs> so you have, you have start them young. That's, That's right. Yeah, they start them young. So they start you up um, doing door-to-door -door at four or five. Also around the same age, they have a ministry school at the actual church where you get up and you start giving five-minute talks on what this scripture means or why these people are doomed or why this particular... You know, religion is correct about everything, um, and it's and it's a constant bombardment, as well. Uh, so it, it's not like a typical uh, church sect that you know once uh, once for an hour on Sunday, that's it. It was uh, Mondays you had a book study for about an hour and a half, and then Wednesday you had three hour meetings with the church, and then Thursday you had an hour long family study, and then Friday you spent an hour getting ready to go into the ministry work, and then ministry work was anywhere from two to five hours on Saturdays, followed by studying for uh, an interactive. So it's it's life. Yeah, it was it life. Is your life. It was life. It was everything. So is there any difference between like those say like like eighteen to twenty year old dudes that I see in bad neighborhoods dressed up doing the, the door to door stuff? What, what do you mean? Is there a difference between them and what? No, I mean, like, are they, um, do you say, like, you're with your parents and you, you go hand in hand? Is that, is there something that, um, like, are they like, okay, you have to go to this neighborhood. You've reached this age, you have to do your, you know. Well, they, they have their territories, uh, that, that break up into that ministry work. But as far as you have to do this, that, or the other, um, you know, there's a governing body that... Uh, it gives continuous, never-ending suggestions as to how much time you should be spending recruiting other people, or what kind of talks you should be giving at what age, or um, you know how you're going to interact with your classmates and your teachers when you're at school. Uh, okay. So it's uh, there's a constant said but unsaid um, instruction that exists more or less forever. Alright, so we'll move on from there. One second. Hey, Lance, I'll start that up after. What? I'll start that up after. Oh, you know, it. Yeah, it makes too much noise. Yeah, we're almost we're almost done. Cool. Alright, so Alright. So now that we powered through all that in my my infinite ignorance. Um That's so not some of the fun stuff. We'll, 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 you know, I, I used to call this the speed round, but uh, oh, I realized in the last one that uh, I was really glossing over some interesting, <laughs> some interesting stuff. So that's not infinite ignorance either. It's a, uh, I think that's a, a, a big piece of what's missing in my humble opinion in a lot of society is a lot of, you know, lack of interest in other people or, or, or like I said, being unable to have that whoops moment. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't understand or if you're having trouble figuring out, like, what exactly it is that you want, you probably are missing a whoops somewhere here or there. And, like, you've just been continuing in this track for, like, way too long. Well, I'm time. just I'm very curious about that kind of stuff because, like, I, I, did, I did nine years of Catholic school. So uh -huh. it was, like, beaten into you from the young age. With a ruler. They, yeah, like, you, they really get it in there. And then once you get out of it, you're like... Who I'm so out yeah, of it. I'm so happy. Especially the priest thinks you're cute. They really beat it in there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, once you're out, you you think like, okay, I don't have to think about it anymore. But you you start to kind of gloss over some of the other religions that you like. They're out there and they're not. You know, you don't think to ask questions about. Yeah, it. You're just like, I got out of one. I don't need to start digging yeah, into you, another. You gloss over the similarities that you have, or you gloss over like where they have something correct, but you don't, or where you, or, or where like. You should be grateful for your own experience and your upbringing because other people haven't had that learning experience. Yeah. Um, there's not enough 
of the borrowing and share uh, and sharing. You know. Cause... Yeah, I'm just curious because I mean, to, to yeah. your naked eyes, it's just like, oh, that's just different outfits. I don't, I don't know their yeah. religion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so on to the fun stuff. Um, he like said I was treating it like a speed round, but if if we hit a snag on something, let's talk about it. Um, do you have a go-to snack? Like it was just uh, you're not crazy dieting or anything like that. You're just like I. I'm going in, and I'm getting this snack. Let's, uh, let's do it. Carrots and hummus are pretty pretty high up there. I like to chop up garlic, uh, so, uh, cook that up a little bit in some olive oil, put that into red pepper hummus, sabra red pepper hummus, carrots or broccoli. That's my snack. Um, nice. Sabra getting a little free plug there. Oh, like yeah. That. Sabra, <laughs> if you need a, you know, if, if you want to further the partnership, I, I would be more than happy to uh, <laughs> oblige. Um so yeah, carrots and hummus. Uh, I like pea pods. I like what other snacks? There's a bunch of other more horrible ones, but I, I, I do a I do a fairly good job of keeping my snacking to a substance that's not as horrible for me as yeah. Know, those are excellent. A whole, snacks. A whole sleeve of uh, fig Newtons or Oreos or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer. Good answer. Do you have a uh, do you have a shoe preference? Ah oh, man, uh, sneakers. Well, I mean, you got like a brand or something. This is again, I'm not trying to fish for free plugs, but uh, I'm um, always genuinely curious of like, hey, Asics, uh, I'm available. Uh, the best <laughs> rotting shoe I've ever had has been Asics. Okay, uh, so that's hand, a good, that's a good go-to. Hands, hands down. Um, but w- w- I have a particular issue where uh, no matter what shoe I have, like it has to be like the widest version because I have platypus feet. Very good for swimming. <laughs> wide foot. Yeah, but yeah. but very you know, the wide foot makes some. Uh, certain molds of shoes not wearable, but Asics uh, have been the best running shoe that I've ever had. All right, good. What well, um, I know I mentioned earlier pet peeves about your work, but do you have any like general pet peeves about people in general? Oh man, or oh, not even people, just society. Uh, Whatever really irks you. People don't question what they read and see from media enough. <laughs> people have one source of information, be it late night TV or whatever whatever dot com or this that and the other and then they regurgitate what they heard they did not look into anything about it and they think that they're informed individuals and they're part of the problem it's quality pet peeve independent thinking all the way what um <laughs> what kind of soap do you use uh dove dove all right yeah. <laughs> gotta be the dove. Be dove man uh spicy not spicy oh man it depends uh you can give me some scenarios <laughs> Mm, recent, I, I, I've become more of a, a spicy kind of guy in the past couple of years. Uh, that hummus that I just mentioned, oftentimes I'll put black pepper or red pepper flakes into it. Uh, sometimes when I cook up the chicken that I you know, bake uh, in large quantity, I use some uh, sriracha on that. So, okay, that's um, a little, little, little bit spicy. Yeah, that okay. depends on the horoscope. You know, sometimes yeah. the horoscope says mercury is in retrograde and you're not going to want spicy. And so I just, you know, make a mental note that it's not time for spicy um, or you know, in, in some other some other way, form, or fashion that's not as big, generalized, and phony. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it just depends. No Fair offense enough. to the astrology people out there. You're, you're on to something, <laughs> but not the whole picture, and you should look deeper. <laughs> you're on to something. <laughs> you're on to something, but it's incomplete, just like you. <laughs> All right. I know, I know you're a healthy guy, but um, you, you have a favorite candy. Oh, Let's say it's God. Halloween. You're just going to just have one little thing. But you got you got anything in the world to choose from? What, what are you uh, getting? Cookie dough ice cream. Cookie dough ice cream. I don't know if that qualifies as candy, oh, but it's crap. definitely a treat. Uh, uh, well, let's see. One of the candies. Uh, Cowtails comes to mind, as well as Snickers, as well as Reese's. I like all of them too much. That's the problem. Like like in picking one candy. Reese's are good. M and M's are good. Actually, no. I got it. I got it. You got it. Trail mix. Trail mix <laughs> is my shit. When you start counting calories. And you love trail mix, a part of your soul dies. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, yeah, go to, I can't remember the name brand, go to Target, buy trail mix there. It comes in like a container with a green package and a white rooster on it. That's my jam. All right. Well, you said cowtails first, so I'm editing all the rest of that. Ah, out. Damn it. <laughs> um, no, it's just, it's so weird. Like, I've only done three of these interviews so far. Uh-huh. And, and, those kind of answers are always like, what? Like, I, you know, Dylan, I interviewed him first, and he was like, malted milk balls. I was like, what are you, 80? Like, <laughs> malted milk balls? Weirdo. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have a, 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 a tipping custom 
that you're uh twenty percent. Twenty percent it's just twenty percent or if I'm at a bar I'll give uh one to two dollars depending on the amount of drinks that I had. Per drink or <laughs> Yeah, per yeah. drink. So okay. if, I, right. if I get two beers I'll give four or five bucks to the bartender. Oh okay, cool. Yeah, all right. I try to be as helpful as possible. Cause I, I can... just like to test the waters because every once in a while I feel like I'm gonna catch someone and be like one of those not tipping people. I eh, see you. Yeah, bad people. <laughs> um, your favorite vegetable. You might have already covered this, but uh, uh, let's go with and, carrots, and, carrots and broccoli. Carrots and broccoli? All right. Pots and pans. Easy. Easy stuff. Uh, toothpaste. What kind of toothpaste? Crest. Crest. Crest whitening. Crest regular. Crest something crazy. Uh, crest whatever I happened to grab from the shelf that day. Good it's, answer. It says crest on it. I grabbed it. Maybe it's whitening. Maybe it's gum protection. Maybe it's maybe I'm born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> Who knows what it is? But if it's Crest, I'm grabbing it and uh, putting it in my mouth. <laughs> what's uh, what's your biggest fear? Oh man! Take your time with it. You don't have to. You don't oh, have to God. spill. Biggest fear is that I failed to accomplish what I was capable of accomplishing. Whatever that is, I you know. I, so it's like a grand scheme kind of thing, as opposed to a specific... Yeah, like, if, if I could put a quarter into a crystal ball and see for a fact, no no second guessing, for a fact, that I had something there when it comes to comedy, but I never pursued it. Or if I had something there when it comes to music, but I was lazy. I didn't have the right partners. I did mm. not pursue things in the correct way. <laughs> uh, or even with this field. I, did, did I really pursue this in every avenue that I possibly could have and by this time at this juncture at, at this space of life I should have been completely independent like I, yeah. I fear failing despite any knowledge I have I, I fear failing myself and in turn failing the people that I care about most in my own life that's a very profound answer I like that Dylan said spiders spiders but, uh, <laughs> what a girl <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, you bastard. Okay. Um, what do you? What, what's something that you wish you had learned earlier in life? And this could be five years, ten years, whatever. Just something that, like, if you knew this, if you knew what you knew now back then, what and would you pick? What would you not, not like to, to have? Not, not to be too negative. I wish I knew how much cult mentality exists everywhere you go. I wish I understood how easy it is to fall prey to that. And I wish I understood to the extent to which uh, major organizations across the board, financial, media, you name it, they all fall victim to thinking the way they think. Everyone else thinks that they ought to think. So you wind up losing track of who's really in charge and who's really being themselves. I wish I had known that a lot sooner. Um, I wish I had known that you know, being raised to believe in Santa Claus was something that everyone dealt with and that it was something that exists far too often and far too prevalently in our societies based off of uh, whatever avenue of society you happen to be analyzing at that, you know, in this moment. That's a very good lesson to impart on the world. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's, 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 everywhere. it's incredibly critical to find good people that give a shit about trying to be decent people. That's incredibly important. They're going to help you. You're going to need them. Um, at the same time, it's equally vital to understand how full of poop so much stuff can be. Your higher learning, where they're you know turning you into a debt slave. Your priests, where they're not telling you about the history of the holy text that you're reading. Your parents, your friends, yourself, your your uh, your trusted news source. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, if anyone uh, on the news source thing wants to reach out to you and have me investigate their own news source, happy to do so. I'll, I'll do that for a for a for a Lincoln and a high five because that's easy. <laughs> oh, throw that that last joke. That was bad. That was a bad joke. Throw that. <laughs> Don't worry throw that about one. it. Don't worry about it. We're gonna wrap it up on this one. What um, what's the best advice you ever got? Be yourself. Okay. Play. That's no, it's it's a it's far more profound than I can adequately explain. Be yourself, like <laughs> figure out like who you've always been. Figure out like what your natural talents are. Don't shy away from it. Like 
uh, we, uh, many people, myself included, had spent way too much time, effort, and energy trying to figure out how to be accepted by others. But at the end of it all, uh, when you're when you're truly being yourself, that's how, when, where, and why you got the friendships and the love into your life that means the most to you, and that's most important to you, and that brings you allies that will help you the most. I think that's a very good answer. As cliche as it might be, take the time to think about that. Yeah. And that's that's real. Yeah. That it is. is real. It's not just a bumper sticker. It's <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> it's a reality. Just, just like a lot of uh, you know, just like a lot of scriptures. There's a lot of scriptures that have some wisdom to them, but uh getting them from a church is not where you need to be getting them from. And there's a lot of wisdom that comes from bumper stickers or fortune cookies that are useful but you know just taking them at the face value you have from the back of that car it's not it's not doing any justice to what you're reading yeah there's there's knowledge everywhere but a lot of it needs to be taken with a grain of salt exactly. or even just with some good perspective yeah and, and and i guess another part would be when it comes to the most important knowledge that you yourself need uh when you look for it it makes itself available to you and i don't say that coming from any organize anything looking for a donation like, <laughs> like that you have to figure that out for yourself and you know when you start looking for it all of a sudden by circumstance by happenstance uh it's it's gonna pop its head up and you have to be on the lookout for it all right do you have any just any final thoughts any um anything to tell the world about you know what you do for a living uh eat your vegetables use sunscreen and um uh, value your privacy and protect it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good lesson to take away from this. Yeah, yeah. privacy. You're, you're out there. You're exposed. Yeah. Here, here's a final joke for you. Your your uh, your stuff online is private. Because <laughs> uh, you know Zuckerberg, he uh, he stole the entire idea for Facebook itself. He wouldn't ever lie about what he is or is not doing with your data. He's someone you can trust, right? He's got. Smiling baby face to the news says he's an upstanding fellow. You can trust him. No. 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 Just no. I'm not going to sugarcoat that one. No. No. Value your privacy and be yourself. Find people who you can be yourself with. You know, fuck the Borg. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for doing the show. All right. Anytime. It's a good time.